Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible studies we continually write and divide the word the truth. Now there again I'd like to welcome all YouTubers, social media, anybody viewing past, present, Lord willing, future videos. Now in today's study I'm going to kind of switch off and go to a parable, but it's of course a parable which Christ uh, spoke in many, many parables, but they were all parables of mysteries to the kingdom. Now, you know, we talk about the mystery of, of the kingdom, the mystery of Christ, the mystery of the gospel, the mystery of reconciliation. Uh, Paul uses the word mystery 20 times. So understanding he is a master teacher to the Gentiles to reveal the mystery of Christ, which is Christ coming, buying back, redeeming the first fruits of Israel, and then uh, the resurrection of them ascended to heaven, and then by the promise of the Father to send the Holy Spirit to birth those, uh, to convert those, being the apostles first, and all the early believers, and they were to preach this gospel which comes from the law and the prophets of the redemption of the first fruits, firstborn of Israel, Christ being the firstborn of many brethren. So we've talked about this many, many hours, people, but there again, uh, as a whole out there in the internet world, as far as the preaching of Jesus, it's still a mystery to most. Now, there again, the books are being opened. Daniel's sealed up. The book of Revelation being opened for us to come and understand we're at the end. For those that hear the truth, the gospel, which was preached in the first century, which got covered up by iniquity and still being is still covered up, but there, the word is starting to penetrate the darkness for those to come to his marvelous light because that's what the... Prophecy says that at the end, uh, the books will be open and the revelation of the mystery will be revealed as the two witnesses stand up to confirm the covenant with many for one week. In the middle of that week, they will be cut off. They will die, just like Christ told them. They will not taste death until he, right before he comes in his kingdom. And, of course, once they die and in three and a half days, they lay dead and then they stand up on the middle of the third, three and a half days in the middle of the day, and that's when the resurrection, that's when our blessed hope, people, comes into being. So, so I want to go back. We're going to go back and look at a very a parable that you've heard about, I'm sure. Uh, it's been a long time since I've taught on this, but for what's being revealed to us now, uh, hopefully this will come uh, for those that see and understand what Christ was speaking when he was speaking to the progenitors here. In this parable, how magnificent it is if you have eyes to see. Uh, and of course, those that have been viewing the videos for several years, especially for the last two years or so, hopefully you're coming to understand what this whole fullness of time means 2,000 years ago when Christ come to redeem his lost sheep. Now, you probably say, or there might be some out there that are saying, well, this seems like, you know, this is all I talk about, or this is, uh, I understand Christ coming to redeem and there are 144,000, they're our brethren, and they're coming back uh, when they come back, they're going to get us, and then Christ sets up his kingdom, defeats the enemies of Israel, uh, or those that are trying to take the land. That's true, but the whole, that's what this is all about, people. So, I mean, you say, what else is there? Anything else outside of the first love that Christ come to fulfill? The whole world, don't even, the biggest part of the world, don't know about it. So, of course, that's all Paul talk. If you go and review people, the 20 times he used mystery in his teaching, and you review the 48 to 50 times he used the word H-O-P-E, hope, you'll find out that's all he taught. Matter of fact, the king Agrippus and Festus 
told him that he was mad. And that's, not, that's all was on him. That's all he taught people. So there again, when if you, and I understand because it seems like this is repetition. Well, it's not repetition. It's just following the scripture of what the whole scripture is about. When Christ was born, they were born. When Christ was birthed, it was already ordained that God had already prepared that body for them. And so when you see his birth, they're birthed. He escapes to, his, uh, to Egypt with his family, and Herod puts out a degree to kill those firstborn in Christ, because of Christ's name. And then you have the prophecies as we go through all this. But that's everything. Is, that's the whole uh, redemption, people. That's salvation. There's not any other works that you think you can do to, if uh, you know, I, I don't know how to, you know, in other words, you won't, I will only teach this according to what the word says and even teaching his birth and all the things that's revealed to us through the Greek. Uh, and then when he grows up and then he starts his ministry and then he dies and in the book of Revelation, because it's all, that message is the same theme, but that's the gospel that needs to be preached, people, not the gospel we've been raised with. So, and anything you add on that, you got to understand the prophecy singular from, from Revelation 1 to the end of the book. If seal, don't seal the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. Anybody that adds to the prophecy singular, anybody that takes away from the prophecy singular, uh, he will take you out of the book or you'll be judged according to the plagues. So what else is there to preach or teach? Nothing. Because when you come to understand that, you walk in that. You teach that. You've been called out, separated from the world. He's coming back to get you for those that believe and what his order arrangement's about, what he come to do, what he's coming back to do, what the whole new creation is about, people. So, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff out there that is exactly what he said would be going on that would draw your attention away from the simplicity of the of Christ being in Christ. So so it's so very, very important. Now we're gonna to go to the Lord's Prayer and then I want to go to the parable of the rich man, the poor man. And let's see we know if you've studied any of the teaching or listened to any of the sermons on the rich man, poor man you know, of course, it's about the rich man God sends to hell and the poor man goes to heaven. It's not about that. So hopefully, uh, for those now that understand the mystery, that are not confused on what Christ and the fullness of time when Christ come, he come to redeem those under the law, that's the first fruits, and he got them. The promise kept, and you're sealed with that promise you believe, and that's your salvation. See, there's no other gospel. That's the gospel. That's the good news was given to the shepherds. The shepherds went down and gave, told Mary about it. And then as Mary with Christ was fulfilling all things according to the law and the prophets, then Simeon comes in full of the Spirit and raises up Christ and blesses him, not only Christ and them, because in Christ, of, of because of him, would be the redemption of the first fruits, which are from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Christ being the promised seed. So let's go to the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll go to the turn, turn to uh, Luke 16, 19. We'll look at the, uh, we'll see how far we can get there in the uh, rich man, poor man. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come unto me and on earth as it is to heaven. Give us today our spiritual bread, forgive us of our debts, we forgive our debtors. Please it's not tested, but deliver us from the wicked one, for thy kingdom is the glory and the power to the ages and ages. In Christ's name we pray. Praise our Father, Yah. We praise our Father continually, people, for him sending his Son and redeeming the first fruits of Israel, which were 
redeemed to Elohim and the Lamb by Christ dying on the tree, fulfilling the will of the Father, that kingdom come into man on earth. We, we give our Father praise and glory because it's through His Spirit birthing us that reveals that truth to us spiritually and writes it, puts it in our mind, writes it on our heart. That's the great love He loves us with. So hopefully you, you, you thank the Father and praise the Father at all times because of what by sending his only begotten son at that appointed time to buy back those under the law and to redeem them and send the Holy Spirit and for you to hear the truth, the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, he sealed you with that promise holy. So, you know, when, when the scripture speaks of that, and, and in that context, people, it's just when you're thinking, when you're thinking in your spirit, it don't mean you sit and say that, but you think of that. You, by thinking that in your spirit, that's on your spirit at times or at all times, then you are thanking the Father. You're praising the Father for that. So, because that's in your mind, you think about that. You think about because without Him fulfilling the law and the prophet, the prophets and then sending the Spirit to reveal that, birth of that, and reveal that, and us become one new man with them, there's no salvation for us. So we continually praise our Father and thank Him for that. So, okay, so let's go to uh, Luke 16, uh, 19, the rich man, the poor man. Now, remember, people, in the context now, this is everything pertaining to Israel now. Don't, don't, don't get them... Don't get caught up and think the rich man's Bill Gates, okay? Don't think the rich man's Donald Trump or or, or uh, uh, Leon Musk or uh, whatever his name is there, the guy that's uh, the bought Twitter uh, or does the electric car business. So all these rich billionaire people of the world at this time, they're just, they're, they are rich men of Babylon. But in this context back here, people, I'm going to say this, and you got to understand this. The rich man, and you go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah reveals this. So Christ is rebuking Judah. Judah is the rich man here, but not some multimillionaire, billionaire out here. Uh, all have to repent, whether rich or poor, but in the context of this parable, you got to stay with Israel. See, you can't come over, like I've heard these preachers say, well, uh, the rich man of the earth is harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom and all that than I uh, uh, can go through the eye of a needle and all that. That's, that's a parable, but that, that wasn't an eye of a needle. That has to do with the get, uh, going in the gates there, the way the gates were made and the camel trying to be able to get under those gates, uh, get down low enough to get under the gate, to enter into the city that's so all of this is is put in a western mentality you got you know you, you need to get away from that but i'm saying to you the rich man here is judah they were covetous they were in uh the money they were in with caesar the beast they were in with herod they were in on the slaughter of the first fruits as, as stephen uh, rebuked them and called them murderers and hypocrites. And Christ, John the Baptist, he told them when they come to see him baptizing people, I will, Lord willing, there's so much to, to, to teach here, so much I need to talk to you about. When he talks to you about baptism of water or baptism of the Holy Ghost. But for those that understand the mystery, when we get into that, it should not be such a shock to you. But, of course, those who don't understand this are still rebelling against this or fighting against this or kicking against the pricks, and you're going to, you know, uh, you've got to get rid of your uh, stubbornness, your proudness, because we've all inherited the heresies, people. So our message to us has come out of Babylon, come out of the heresies 
come out of darkness into his marvelous light to see what this is about. Okay, so we see here, there was a certain rich man which was clothed purple and fine linen fair and sumptuous. This is talking about Judah people. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid up at the gate full of sores. Lazarus represents, and Lazarus people is a picture of, of us, of Gentiles. Uh, but now, but you've got to you've got to wait to the order now. So, in other words, Judah is still the stewards of the law, and uh, when Christ comes, and it's who He's speaking to, He's speaking to them. But he's, of course, He's speaking into a parable because it wasn't given to them to know the mysteries to the kingdom, the kingdom being in us. Uh, and of course, when we're born, the kingdom that was got, we're born of that, we're birthed of that, we're clothed with that. Uh, so understanding that spiritual understanding. Uh, so Christ is, is speaking his parable. And he said, desiring to be fed with crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his swords. Now, and of course, this is talking about the Gentiles it longed to to be uh, 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 there, especially in, at this time, uh, longed to, to hear or to have some of the this understanding of uh, of God's people here, and 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 you see that when when the Sufficient woman comes to Christ and said, "I didn't only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel." And she said, "Well, even a, a you know a dog uh, can eat from the rich man, get the crumbs." And so, and and, and in that context, uh, this parable is about that. But he actually did that for the physician woman, and then he left. Uh, he cast out that devil for her. And he said, because of her faith and who he was. See, so you got to keep this in the context of the, what this is talking about. And we see here, and of course it's going to be, uh, they're going to be blinded to this, and the Gentiles are going to get uh, preached the mystery people. It come into band that the beggar died and was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died and was buried. Okay, so one died, went to Abraham's bosom, and the other died and was buried. It just says here, buried, right? Okay, all right, now, let's, let's keep this. We're going to go to the Greek here now, and we're going to look at some things now. Now, remember, because the Greek's going to reveal this, people. If I come to say to you, if I say, okay, Lazarus represents longing to be fed by God. But it wasn't, the order wasn't. But at this time when Christ, what Christ is teaching this, now the, it's, it's the time is coming, so he's teaching a parable. And of course, Lazarus, you can go back to Eliezer, Eliezer under Abraham. He was a Gentile, and, and Abraham hadn't had any uh, children. And Abraham told God, he told God, he said, uh, I have a faithful uh, servant, Eliezer, and he will get all of my rewards. And God said, no, it's, no, your rewards be given. I will grant you a son, Isaac, and and he will get the blessings. So see, but now, see, now we get, now we've come to here, and now we've got a Lazarus, an Eliezer type, and now he's come. See, it's it, it's still of Abraham. You got to remember Abraham here, and so so in the context we've got Lazarus, and and we got Abraham here. Of course, Abraham been asleep asleep. But so the order is, but see then in the mystery in, or in the middle here, you've got Judah, which is fixing to be buried. See, because uh, of course we know they did not understand the mystery. God's blinded them even to this day. So if you understand, so you hopefully you see this order here. Now let's go to the Greek 
and let's see what the Greek, I can go ahead and tell you, but let's look, what, let's see what the Greek says here. So for those who've been studying in these uh, videos or in the studies here, you'll come to see uh, what I'm talking about here when I show you the Greek here. So we see that, that here's Abraham, if you just pass on down through here, and we see that right here, this is uh, 11, this is talking about Abraham, okay, and then we see uh, that Abraham being dead, but uh, but the wealthy abandoned uh, with riches, and then we see here they are uh, buried here. Uh, so, and that's in the uh, that's in the heiress passive addictive, of course, it's the third singular, but so so what's happening here that when it come into being time that the beggar died and was carried with angels into Abraham's bosom, that being uh twenty eight fifty nine, but the rich man uh the rich man here representing Judah and I wanted you to see here the, uh, yeah, the bosom. I'm looking for Abraham's bosom here. Okay. Yeah, the bosom, representing Abraham as singular masculine. That's Abraham. And then we have the rich man or uh, uh, being buried, the rich man being buried. And of course, Lazarus is going to Abraham's bosom. So that's very important to understand that. That's just the, the context there. Uh, and then it says, In hell he lifted up his eyes. Now who in hell? This is talking about the rich man. The rich man buried, or Judah, being dead. And he in Hades, or the grave, lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Now, okay, in this context, people, please, this is a parable, uh, and what is what is talking about here, uh, that the rich man being dead, it means, in this context, that God is, he destroyed them in 70 AD, and then he scattered them. So this Eonian death, or this eternal fire here, or death here, in this context is means they've been removed. God did not do them away with completely, but they've been blinded. They, the wrath of God is still on them until it's the time comes when he will put eye safe on them when they will repent and mourn for the one they perish, people. So you got to kind of look at this in the spiritual context and not take everything because it's a parable. But it is true, it's prophecy being this, a parable. So so when it's talking about the rich man is dead, like, and people preach that like he's dead, and you can, when you die and, and your eyes are open, you're being tormented, that is, that's not what he's talking about. Because we're, when you die, go to sleep, there is no device, work, knowledge, or anything in the grave, people. Now, that's not what they teach out there. But what they teach out there is heresy anyhow. But you've got to understand what he's talking about is people. See? And what, what the context is, they are in mourning. They have been removed, people. I mean, if all these hundreds now, a couple, 2,000 years... Now they're starting to rejoice over there. Some of the Jews and stuff is gathering under this guy, Shlomo, who they feel like has been sent to him because he's a master teacher of the Torah, so to speak. Uh, whether you've been paying attention to what's going on over there or not, but that's what's going on. And they are very happy thinking that their Messiah is about to come because they've been, they've been cast off. They've been without... Uh, 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 a king or a messiah or a temple for all these uh, hundreds or almost 2,000 years. So you gotta got to understand this is all about what Christ faced in and where we're sitting now. So this rich man has nothing to do with 
burning in hell. In other words, he's Judah, the Jews have been removed from God starting in 70 AD, and now they're back in their land over there. I mean, that is to fulfill some of Malachi's prophecy about Edom. But the point being is they're looking for their Messiah because they don't believe that Christ was the Messiah. So they've been tormented. And when it says here, uh, being afar off, seeing, uh, lifting up his eyes, being in torment, this means lifting up eyes, being in torment, they don't see people. And they are being in torment because they don't have, they don't have, uh, 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 of course, at this time, Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. And so they're without the city. They're without the temple, their sacred place, being in torment. But they seeth Abraham afar off. See? And this, and the con because Abraham was their father. Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. See? Uh, we have it up here in the, in the first, in 22. 16.22, which I said, and the angels took Lazarus to Abraham's bosom. Now we're going to say in 16.23, what is the rich man, or what are these eyes that are in Hades seeing afar off in Abraham's bosom? Well, let's look at it. Let's see what, what look what the Greek says here. Okay, and we see this right here. Here we have Abraham afar off, and, and they're seeing here uh, this rich man or the one that's died and their eyes are in Hades here and they're seeing Lazarus now here's the word Lazarus right here it's in the singular masculine Lazarus right here Lazarus in the bosom of him Abraham and look what we have what is in the bosom of Abraham people now how, what does this mean what could be in the bosom of Abraham at this time when Christ is speaking? It's just amazing of what, people? This is, I mean, this is so amazing of what the Lord's revealing to us. But you got to look at the Greek. So in Abraham, remember, Abraham's been dead. But guess what? Christ now is starting a ministry, and he's starting, and he's preaching the parables and teaching. So, uh, guess who's buried, has been slaughtered? It's Rachel's children, it's which Christ come to redeem, the first fruits of Israel. And what is, the, what is the parable, what is Christ saying in the parable that's in there, that who is in Ra Abraham's bosom? That's talking like a place of rest because they are member Remember Genesis 15, 5, the, who's, when he's told Abraham, walk outside and look up in the heavens. See all those stars in heaven, he said. He said, now Abraham, if you can number them, that would be as your seed. Well, that's amazing. Now we've got Christ speaking a parable about a rich man, about a poor man, and everybody out here thinks it's got to do with somebody. If you're rich, he's going to send you to hell. And he, and all, and all, and and it's sad, though, people, for those who come and understand this, that people they are blinded, they are they are so deceived out there. It's un, it's just unbelievable. But we've got to preach and teach this message because we're at the end, and these books are going to be open, and the Book of Revelation is going to be open, and people are going to come to understand. They're going to have to come out, repent. And believe what the rich man and the poor man's about, not about what all these preachers who preach these sermons to the rich man and the poor man. But look who is in Abraham's bosom, didn't it? That's in the dainty plural masculine. Who else could that be except Rachel's children? And they're in that spiritual context what Christ is saying because they come through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 tribes, and that's Rachel's children. They've been slaughtered. Abraham's asleep, and it's a picture that they are they were killed, but they are a part of Abraham and in his bosom. And they are, and Christ is fixing real soon here to go to the tree and die, and their graves are going to break open, and he's going to get up, and they're going to get up to fulfill the law of the prophets. 
It's just space and white people. Right here, you've got it. Right here, they are Lazarus. A picture of Lazarus, them, uh, or Lazarus representing a Gentile, us, and and then you you see the brethren here. That's them, because see this message of them is going to go to us Gentiles for our salvation, because God had blinded the rich man. Now, notice what's going to happen from here, people, how awesome this is. And being in Hades, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment afar off, which we just said, and Lazarus being dead is in Abraham's bosom. But who's in Abraham's bosom? Rachel's children. That's what he's talking about. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my language, for I'm tormented in this flame. Now, all right, people. Right here, what is all this symbolic? What does this represent? What's water represent? The living water, the Word. And he's, all he's saying is, I just need a little bit of the living Word. Just, just, just touch my mouth. His language. Is understanding with this living word. And I won't be tormented in this flame. Flame there again is singular. What does Christ represent? In his eyes of them, that's a flame of fire. They reject it. Uh, this is, he's preaching to them. They're going to crucify him, people. Uh, but Christ is telling them, he's teaching this parable to them, and this is the torment that's going to torment them is they rejected their Messiah. And they're tormented in this flame, singular people. It's not flames in a gasoline pit. It is the flame, the word, the truth, for our God is a consuming fire. Truth versus the lie, the deception. Satan is the great accuser, the deceiver of the brethren. So this is what you got to understand. It's what this is talking about. Okay, so right here now. But Abraham said to the son, now if you notice right here, and it's amazing, because when, I just want to show you this so you don't lose this. Right here. There's a certain rich man, right? Okay, now that's how he starts off, Christ. And then, and then we see uh, uh, the uh, uh, Lazarus being the beggar. And then we see the rich man's eyes being in torments and Abraham afar off. And then we see, and, and he cried and said, Father Abraham. Now, how could the rich man? So think about how redundant it is, people. When, when, and you could go type in sermons. And these preachers would say, uh, you know, uh, you know, if you're a rich man, you're not going to go to heaven. You know, it's hard, all that. Well, but see, so is Abraham calling Bill Gates? Is, or is Bill Gates calling back to Abraham and saying, Father Abraham, what about Warren Buffett? What about any? I mean, and I'm not picking on any people. It don't make any difference if they're famous, rich, or, or got plenty of money. But it's not, the context is about Israel people. They ain't got those Gentiles yet. Lazarus, that's a picture, but this is still in the context of Jacob, of Israel, Judah, Abraham, Jesus, uh, Rachel's children. You got it? This is the whole context and the prophets of what the prophets prophesied. See? So stay in that. Don't, don't get away from that. Now, you're going to see right here that, uh, so now, You've got the rich man calling Abraham father. And then you're going to have Abraham calling him son because guess what? Through Abraham, there come Isaac. Through Isaac come Jacob. Through Jacob come the 12 tribes. And one of the tribes was Judah. And of course, you have the other tribes. And you're going to see that Judah is saying, go to my brothers. And that's going to tell you, he's going to say, I've got five other brothers. Well, when you go look all this up, you understand He's, he's talking about going back 
to all of those, to his brethren that were born through Leah. <clears throat> Leah and uh, Jacob. Through Leah and Jacob, there were six sons. And then you had only two sons through Rachel. And then you had two sons from her concubine. Uh, and then you had two sons from uh, Leah's concubine, which gives you the twelve. See, so we got it all right here, talking about uh, Israel, Jacob. So he said, and he cried, saying, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, send Lazarus, that he may dip. So we understand we're talking about the word there. And then, and then Abraham comes back and says, Son, remember thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things? And likewise the Lazarus, evil things, but now is comforted, and thou art tormented. Okay, now he says, and beside all this between us, and there is a great gulf fix, so that they that would pass from hence to you cannot. See, they, the ones that are in Abraham's bosom that are going to be resurrected, they cannot pass to you because they're going to go back to heaven. And even the Gentiles that don't come into this until Paul comes on the scene. So this great go fix here that they can neither pass to you, cannot, uh, neither can they pass to us that from hence, uh, that, that would come from hence. In other words, this great go fix is part of the mystery people because they're blinded. He's talking about the rich man of Judah. And there again, when Christ come, he won't hold them. He says, today, uh, all this peace, this covenant should come unto you uh, because you would have it not. You're, you're blinded, see? He wept over Jerusalem when he come riding in, ready to, to fulfill this. Because peace covenant, the covenant people, the new covenant of the house of Israel and the house of uh, Judah is Christ and the one new man. That's the new covenant. That's what that is. That is the new covenant. He come to fulfill, Jeremiah 31, 31, fulfill the new covenant. And that new covenant was redeeming the first fruits of Israel to start the new creation, the one new man. That's the good news that the angels showed the shepherds uh, tending the flock, and they were so afraid, and then they said, don't be afraid for this is, this is salvation that's going to come to all men. Start with the Jews and then to the Gentiles. Of course, the ones that believe. So this is the good news, the good tidings to all men. And it's amazing. And you follow this all the way down and all the way to teaching. And I, I will even say this. Uh, you go study it. But when Christ, when Christ grows up after he comes back from Egypt, it says when he comes back and he grows up strong in the Lord and, and, and uh, among favor of men, and then he's on a Passover, 12 years old, he's teaching in the temple, and they had seen him for three days, and they come back to him, and you know, as he's teaching, they're all amazed, those lawyers, the scribes, is what he was teaching in the Torah. And and Joseph and Mary said, do you not you have worried us to death? He said, uh, well, you ought to know I am about my father's business. Now, I'll just say to you, instead of going back there, go back there and look, look at it and look at the Greek. I mean, all of those that understand the mystery, if he was teaching the scribes at 12 years old, they were amazed at his teachings. It was about the law of the prophets, people. And when he said, I'm about my father's business, well, what was the father's business? What did the father send him to do? In the fullness of time, God sent his son to buy back, redeem those under the law. See, be first fruits, first fruits to Elohim the Lamb. See, so he's about his father's business at 12 years old. He was already showing them, them in the scripture, and they were amazed at his teaching what he was showing them, that what the prophets were saying. Is that, I mean, this is, this is what this is all about, people. So right here, so when we get to Luke and his parable, he's, now he's, of course, grown here and teaching this, and they can't go, people. It's a golf fix. That's what the golf fix is about. Now, notice... It's 27. Then he said, I pray there thee, therefore, Father, 
that thou would send him to my father's house. Now, what does this mean? What is the context of, of Luke 16, 27 mean? It means, people, Father Abraham and then Isaac. Now, this rich man being Judah, his father is Jacob. You see, so we go from Father Abraham to Jacob, who has the 12 sons, and this is one which represents rich man or Judah, and, and he's saying, okay, but would you, would you send this, you know, to my father's house, talking about Jacob now, right here. So you go from Father Abraham now to his father. Would you send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify or witness unto them, lest they also come unto this place of torment. And it's amazing, people. Another five brethren, what I said, if you go back to look and see how many, the children that Jacob, Leah had, Leah being his first wife, but Rachel being his first love, actually first wife to God, the way God sees it. But, but Jacob had to work an extra seven years for Rachel. So this is talking about his five brethren, and that's who he's talking about here. Now notice right here he says, Abraham said to him, no, he says, they, your brethren, all of you had the Torah, you had Moses and the prophets. Notice the prophets here. Let them hear them. The Torah, it's in the Torah. Moses and the prophets, uh, the law and the prophets. They all had that, and, now, and the law of the prophets was this, what Christ has come to fulfill, but they didn't know the day of their visitation. Okay, Luke 16, 30. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if one went from them, unto the, one went unto them, towards them, from the dead, they will repent. Okay, now right here, people. Now, what is very interesting here, what you've got to not leave this out. You see this little word, apo? That's a preposition under Greek. And it means, what it means, people, it means to be, uh, it's a primary part of simple, it means off or away from something near, or in a sense of place, time, relationship. So, now, we got another word down here. It's going to be X. So you got this one and that one, but they're both not the same. So if one went unto them apart from the dead, or from the dead, meaning away from the dead, uh, they will repent. Now notice what Abraham said. And he said to him, If they do not hear and believe Moses and the prophets, because that's, that's the book they had, Moses the prophets. And they did not believe Moses the prophet. Neither were they persuaded, right here, right here. Neither were they, uh, the prophets, neither were they be persuaded, though one resurrected Ek out of the dead. Now right here, Ek out of the dead. Now notice, people. Of course, the dead here is in the genitive plural masculine, now, who, who, would this, who is Christ talking to them in this parable you think he's talking about? He's talking about him. Because he was raised first. He was the first, first fruit that slept. Uh, that, uh, he was first born of many, many brethren. And then uh, they were killed. When he died, their grace broke open. And then he was buried, and then when he resurrected, they resurrected. Ek out of the dead. He come ek out, and they come out of their tombs. That's ek out of the dead. So, so what is the Christ saying? Well, if you didn't believe Moses and the prophets, because the, the, the whole volume of the book is about me, and, of course, about the prophets, it's about the first fruits. If you don't believe that, then it's not going to do any good now. In other words, you see, judgment, and they're going to be blinded to this. So this is what this parable is about. Now, let's move right in, if we will. Let's move into the 17th chapter. And let's go a little bit here. And you're going to see something here very amazing. Now, I want to, I want to 
Uh, okay, now people, when you get to Luke 17, 1, we just left 16. Now, for those who understand and what this is all about and believe, been sealed with his promise, teaching his promise, or studying his promise, uh, this mystery, the gospel of your salvation, or studying with people, or wherever you're at, at this truth. Uh, so we got to remember, so when Christ is teaching this, and he moves into this next teaching, this is, people have no idea. You hear these people quote this and stuff. It's because they're ignorant of this. But back then, they shouldn't have been ignorant of it. Cause like he said, you have Moses and the prophets. So what he's going to say next now is very, very, it can be very troublesome. But you got to remember, even our friends and family, sometimes, uh, where we come out of to come to believe this, they're still stuck in the heresy or the preachers are still preaching the heresy. But this is probably one of the most detrimental spiritual house to your being uh, as far as what Christ says anywhere in the scripture. I mean, this is, this is when you come to see this, if this don't put the fear of God in you, if you, don't, if you don't understand what he's saying here, by understanding now and believing, because see, the fear of the Lord is first wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the first wisdom and knowledge. See, if there's no fear of the Lord, then there's no knowledge. So even where we're at, it's the, the fear where we, we reverence our Father. We reverence the Son who's been given all judgment. Uh, so, so very, very important that you understand this. But what I'm showing you, or what's going, to, what you're going to see here next, is very, very humbling. Because if you're on the side and understand what Christ is saying, then you will tremble at this. But most people are not on the understanding of what you might know about this. So out of their mouth, they say things they have no idea of what they're saying. That is very detrimental to their health, spiritual health, unless, unless their eyes are open and they repent and believe. And then, of course, their sins are removed. But look what Christ is saying next here, people. Then said he unto them, the disciples, his learners, it's impossible, but the offenses will come. Offenses of the gospel, offense of the kingdom will come, but woe through whom they come. Now look what he's saying, people. All, he's talking about offenses of the kingdom. But you got to understand he is fixing to get repent for the kingdom of heaven is not at hand. The kingdom is in Abraham's bosom, people. The kingdom that he come to redeem, the first fruits, the firstborn, the 144,000, 12,000 of Judah to Benjamin, he is coming to get. That is his kingdom. That is his bride. That is the church of the firstborn. Ecclesia called out assembly. That is the new creation. That is the one new man, not Adam through Adam and Eve anymore. The new creation is heavenly creation, the one new man. But look what he is saying. The offenses are going to come about this gospel, about this preaching, and it's going to, there's going to be persecution about this, and, and, uh, and then the heresies are coming in. It's going to be covered up. It's going to be hidden. But look what he says about these offenses of, to the kingdom. Now, you also, when he's teaching later on, he says, anything that offends my kingdom, you got to understand, when he's speaking about his kingdom, he is speaking about him and his redeemed brethren. 
And now they are kings and lords. He is king of kings and lords, lord of lords, people. Now this is before he ever gets them. Now at the end of the Revelation, they're, they are kings now. They're ruling and reigning. Now the book of Revelation takes on a whole different revealing of them. I'm talking about the, right now, they're in Abraham's bosom, so to speak, spiritually. But he's about to, to raise them from Abraham's bosom, but he's not going to raise Abraham because Abraham is in the genealogy of being the father of many nations and the father and the brethren, father of them, literally through his stock, but he can't be completed until the fullness of the Gentiles are completed. That's Hebrews 11th chapter. That's 7,000. Abraham is one of the 7,000 that did not bow the knee to Baal. So, and you have that in Hebrews 11th chapter. Okay, so right here. Look what he's saying, people. Now, he says right here, it is possible, it is impossible, but all fences will come. All fence means a trap stick a snare, a cause of sin, a cause to fall, stumble, a stumbling block will come, but woe, he says now, woe through whoever they come. Now, let me say this, uh, and I, I have to go, I'm putting the, the foot on the pedal here, people. Because I'm just speaking to me as a teacher. Uh, but it's, it's actually speaking to any of those teachers out there or preachers or they think they're preaching the gospel. If you ever come to this knowledge, you need to repent and repent immediately. Because, you see, the next verse is the detrimental to your spiritual health. If you do not, if you do not come to this understanding, then you'll be judged like everybody according to their works. And he said you'll pay double for double because you are responsible people. I'm speaking now to teachers and preachers. You are responsible for the souls that have come to you for for that guidance, for that direction. And of course, most of them are blinded, hugely blinded to your people. But until the witnesses stand up, God's hand is extended even to those that are blinded people if they hear the message and repent. See, that's, the message is still the same. Repent for the kingdom is not at hand, the kingdom of heaven. So, but here's the next verse, people. Uh, verse 2. It is better for him that this offense comes. It's better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and cast into the sea, notice, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Who do you think he is talking about? People, who do you think Christ is speaking here of? He is speaking of those that are in Abraham's bosom. He's speaking of the Rachel's children that were slaughtered by Herod and the uh, progenitors of the biggest part of them was in on it. The one of these little ones. Here's the Greek people. The one of these little ones. You know why is he speaking this way, people? Because this is who he come to get. And they're going to offend. They're going to speak and contradict and gainsay against this. But look what Christ is saying. Now notice here, right here, right here is uh, the little ones right here. I'm going to put it in yellow. In other words, they will scandalize. They will entrap. They stumble. Entice you to sin, apostasy, displeasure. Right here, they will speak against the little ones. Right here, here is the little ones. Right here. 
V Genity Plural Masculine, 3398 Little Ones, GPM. Uh, these, G, the ones he's talking about, the little ones, these, uh, one. And, and these little ones are him, of him. He's one. Uh, that's in the singular. The little ones of him, of one. See, that is the Christ being. Now, see, here's amazing understanding. What we went over the last video, see, when Christ was born, they were born. You got to see that. They were slaughtered because of his name. He come to redeem them. They are his body. They are his brethren. They are our brethren once you're born again and believe you've been birthed by their spirits. You, have, you are now clothed in them. Christ head over the temple. You're in their kingdom. You're in their household. You're in the commonwealth. You've been set free by the gospel once you believe, uh, sealed with this promise. Now, the beautiful thing here, people, Christ is standing right there and telling them, his apostles, he's teaching that offenses are going to come. And look what Satan has done. Look at the heresies that's covered this up. And they have no idea what they're preaching or teaching out there. All right, now, the point I'm saying to you right here, Christ is saying, uh, it's better for a millstone to be hung around their neck and cast in the sea for them to eat my It's better for that to happen than you to open your mouth and offend one of these little ones. What do y'all understand what he just said? One of these little ones, his, they are they are his brethren, people. They were slaughtered because of his name. See? They are the one new man, the new creation. They are the spirit of the law. This is the new covenant that I'll make the house of Israel and the house of Judah. This is Israel's new covenant, the one new man, not the written law, the one new man. He writes that now in your mind and puts it on your heart. They are wrote, Christ being the lawgiver, him being uh, this, the creator, the, the firstborn, first right sheep, and rank and order of the new creation. This is the new creation, the new covenant that God made, starting with Israel, people. And this mystery was given to us, and the heresies have covered it up. Now, right here, so understand what, look what this is saying, people. How unbelievable is what Christ is saying here, and, and just it's continuation of the rich man, poor man. All right, now, before we close here, Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother transpass, transpass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Now, there again, now, people, in teaching this, understand what he's saying here. He's talking about back there, where we're sitting I mean, you can't go out here and rebuke somebody that don't know what this gospel's about. So we're on the other end. We're like now this book being open. This is like, look at the field. Look at the harvest, people. Few labors. There's labors, but this is the 11th hour of the labors working in the vineyard to bring forth the harvest. But I'm trying to show you back then this first come to them was through Moses of the prophet. Now it's being given and revealed to us Gentiles here at the end. But I'm not going to rebuke a Baptist preacher or, or some preacher out here. If the Lord wills that door be open, I will bring them to the knowledge or teach them and God quickens. And then when they come to the knowledge of truth, then this message is definitely for them. But I'm showing you what this is about. I'm showing you what Christ was teaching back then because they should know the day of their visitation. But see, it's given to us Gentiles. We should know about it, but I'm just warned. But I wanted you to see this. 
But see, there's people out there that's coming to this knowledge uh, of the truth, but and when they come to it, you're, you come to see now how important this is, uh, of what this is about. But there again, if we got someone that's interested in this truth or we're bringing them to this knowledge, you're wanting to feed them this truth and with kindness and with mercy and understanding. But now, if they keep pushing and rejecting and rejecting, you'd have to leave that alone. But the point I'm saying is, if you if they come halfway to understanding and they come back at you, or you still have to leave it alone. But it's it's you, you don't look at them like uh, because they they weren't raised under the law. They didn't have this. So it's a different look for us, but what I wanted you to see is, it, it would be, okay, it, uh, let me put it this way, okay, let me put this where we're at here on this. <clears throat> I've come to this understanding, and there's people with me that have studied with me for years, we've understood this for a long time, okay? So that would be like, now I turn away from it. You know, I start moving away towards something else. And I have a brother that I fellowship with that understand this, and they see me turning away. And they come to me, and they rebuke me over that. Now, that that's that would be sufficient, because I understand this, I understand the mystery. So, so hopefully that will help. For those that don't fully understand, it's not talking about you, because you've got to come to understand, and then you've got to be moved away from it. And then you would have to be rebuked. But I would need to be rebuked by one of my brethren if I started going off to some something over here or this, whatever, this Messiah, this false teacher is going to stand up as Messiah in the end. If I'm alive when that happens, uh, we have to, for the old should understand, yeah, you, I would definitely need to be rebuked if I was moving away from that. Moving away from this uh this glorious gospel that this, this saved me, and I'm going to just drop it and leave. See, so that's what he's talking about. And if he repent, then you would forgive me if I repented. Okay, now, if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day return again to thee, saying, I repent, look what Christ said, thou shalt forgive him. See, if he repents and believes, now, people, it does. But you will know what he's talking about. But if he repents and turns from that, then there's forgiveness here. Okay, and then he says, okay, 17.5, increase our faith. And the apostles said, Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if I had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say, unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and, and, and thou be planted in the sea, and it should uh, and be planted, uh, plucked, okay, plucked up by the root, and thou be planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Well, in the sea represents the Gentiles, people. If this be plucked up, if this truth is plucked up, and this is planted in the uh, nations, which is going to be, and it should, and that sea or those nations should obey you. Unworthy servants. That's what this is mean, because this is where it's going. He's saying this faith is going to the nations, people. And it has, but it's been heresies come in, but it's the nations here at the end. This book's being open. That's why we're coming to see what this is all about, and we're teaching this, people. All right, unworthy servants. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say to him by and by when he come from the field, Go sit down to meat. Now, the field, actually, remember the parables, he represents the world. The meat that we eat, you know, it's, it's through the spiritual food. And we'll not rather say unto him, Make ready wherewith I may sup and gird myself and serve me till I have eaten and drinken, or drunken, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he think? that that served because he did the things that were commanded him, I say or I throw not, meaning he, I think not's what he's saying. So likewise, you when you shall have done all these things, 
he said, Are you commanded you say, You are unprofitable servants. We have done that which our duty is to make to do, he said here. So in other words, so it's like uh, the talents, uh, we'll get into the minus and all those parables about trading these scriptures for one another people. And it's about the ones that have traded with and received uh, two like-minded or three like-minded or become to understand what the scriptures are saying when Christ talks about the rewards when he comes back. Though we've been faithful over a few things, I'll make them ruler over several things in that context. See, But the few things he's talking about is his first love, his first works, people. That's the foundation. See, uh, so it's very, very important. So hopefully you're coming to see uh, as, as he moves in uh, from 16 to 17, I want to, let's go down to the coming of the kingdom here, and I will not get far, I'll go ahead and stop here, but 1720, the coming of the kingdom. So, so the Pharisees come to him, and they command Christ to say, what's the kingdom of God? What is it coming? Now, when it should come, he answered. In other words, what Christ is teaching the kingdom here. And they say, well, when does this kingdom of God come? And he said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither saith shall they say, lo here or lo there. For the kingdom, behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, notice here. The kingdom of God is it's not over there, over here. It's in you. Now, people, <laughs> as I close here, those that are following the videos should understand, when you're born again of the Spirit, that kingdom at Pentecost, when, those, when that heavenly language at Ruach fell like fire languages in their head, that, that fire of those languages, and then they stood up and they preached the resurrection. They preached the kingdom. They preached the cross, and when Christ died, the graves broke open, and when he got up, they got up. They preached the kingdom, and, and he ascended, and they ascended. See, that's what they were preaching, see. And see, now when they were birthed, that birth of that kingdom is in us, see. That's what he's talking about here. See, that's a mystery of Christ in you, the hope, the glory. You see, when you're born again, that's Christ's spirit birthing your spirit, but in Christ's spirit that's birthed in you is him king of his kingdom, and they are part of in his kingdom, which he redeemed first. And we have that first fruit of that spirit. See, we are the, see, isn't it amazing, people? This kingdom come into man on earth, now it's in heaven, and this, uh, uh, th this birth that comes from heaven, they are birthing us with this gospel, with this good news about Christ and the one new man, we're being birthed from heaven, and that is, that's what he writes in our mind and puts on our hearts is the one new man, that's Christ and them. That is the kingdom, and you can't see it up there, see. And, but it's being explained here. Now, Lord willing, in the next video, we'll pick it up in here, and as we go through here, then and move into chapter Luke 18, we're going to see the widow woman, and we're going to see that parable revealed, and it's going to also talk about the kingdom. And so fully by getting through there, if you don't fully understand what's what we're what I'm teaching here, once we go through 17 and into Luke 18, then you should be able to put the 16, 17, and 18 together. And the main thing is, people, just go back over the verses and, and look at your, your verses 
If you got the Greek text, then look at that where I brought the Greek text in for you to help to understand to you more clearly. And you'll come to understand how amazing this is and see Christ, his whole ministry, his whole teaching, even his parables, was about what he was fixing, what he come to do and what he's fixing to do just in a few short months to where Luke 16, 17, 18, we're just talking about a few months till he goes to the tree to get those uh, redeemed out of Abraham's bosom, to get Abraham's children according to the promise, according to the stars in heaven. And and then Revelation 7 reveals to us, and I heard the number of them was 144,000. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that spirit witness your spirit. We trade the scripture one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, soon coming King, with them. Amen.